All right, let's get it. This is Nap Nose Buffalo. Uh, it is myself, Casey. We are back That's again me, this Casey. week. We have, what, we're going on what like three or four weeks? I think three weeks strong now of you being on the show every week. Like that's that's pretty good at this point. Yeah, yeah. And my wife only complains a little bit. Uh, before I came I'm up, sure, here, I'm she... sure it's just a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure she. I'm probably she's probably a big fan of me. <laughs> she. I told her what I sent you today, and she died laughing. Um, <laughs> But no, she asked me, she said, are you going to be two hours again today? And I was like, Lord, I hope not. That's why we're going up there now. That's why we're going up there now. (laughs) The plan is not to do that. So yeah, if you're listening to this now, we are, we actually, normally we record with the guest beforehand. Then we go back and we do the intro um, because it's a little bit easier for, for our recording to do that, but um, not, not going to happen tonight. So we don't know how long the show is going to go. We'll see. Uh, but we have a bunch <laughs> of stuff around. to get into. Yeah, stick around, find out. Find out. Uh, obviously, like you, you'll see how long it is when, you, when you're watching the video or you're listening to the podcast. But whatever. Um, so we have a bunch of stuff to get into. Obviously, for the the intro segment, do we want to just do the the preseason game against the Bears first? Yeah, uh, let's let's jump into it. Um, yeah. Loved it. Obviously, like yeah. how could you how could you not like it? There was a lot to love about it. I want to talk about uh, Spencer Brown real quick. Okay. Um, and I was told Kendall Kendall said, "Casey, you are so hard on on Spencer Brown," and I get that I am, and I get that he held his own at right tackle. Um, and it's funny, like I said it on Twitter, you commented on it on Twitter. And by the way, if you're not following on uh, following us on Twitter, it's at Kyle Naps and at Cash Out BF. So anyways, I said it on Twitter. I said when you know Spencer Brown came out that I had him projected as the right tackle, taking it over for Daryl Williams. If Daryl Williams turns into a pumpkin, you have him, right, as the back. And he played fairly good at right tackle. He was still doing those little things that I wanted him to get away from, uh, like holding and stuff like that. But he's going to be suitable long term at right tackle. Left tackle, they were probably just putting him there just for the swing tackle ability. But you know, impressed with Spencer Brown. Love that he came out. Love that he fixed some of the stuff that I was like, "Hey, I wish you would fix this." Uh, on the on the other hand, though, he's still doing what he doesn't need to do. But he's a rookie, so we're all good. So, meh. That's 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 my thoughts on Spencer Brown. Meh. I mean, I, he he held his own on a couple of separate occasions against Khalil Mack. So, yep. like, you, you can't be upset with him. No. It, of course, he's going to have a lot to learn. He's going to have a lot of those rookie mistakes. He's going to – like, the game speed is something that's going to be completely new to him. So, yeah. I'm not really worried about any of that stuff. And also, I'm not really worried about it for the simple fact of, like, we don't expect him to play this year. If he plays this year, it's Correct. because of injury. So Correct. I Like – I'm happy with where he's at. The other guy that we drafted, Tommy Doyle, it's going to be interesting to see if he can even make the active roster he's this year. Got him. It's it's going to be tight. Like he's going to have to have a really good showing because he has not really played all that well um, up to this point, at least in my opinion. I want to talk about Trubisky real quick, though. That that's the first about, thing I wanted to talk biscuit. about for sure. Um, Who doesn't like titties? Let's go. <laughs> I, that was a, that was a great tweet. I, <laughs> I saw I saw the interview. Um, yeah, with, with BFT. pardon my take. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Anyways, water yeah, break. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick water wow. break there. Um, we are so, on fire. Trubisky. I loved like everything that I saw from him. The main thing that I really wanted to get out was like the reason that we brought him in is in case of injury, we want somebody who we know can lead the offense. We know can pretty much continue the Bills going on the path that they're going for however long they need to until Allen gets back, if there's an injury. And going into the, the season, like you you don't always know if that's going to be the case. You, you think, you hope, you expect, you want that to be the case if there's an injury that Trubisky could be the guy to step in. But you don't always have that assurance. I think Trubisky's performance, albeit it was against the Bears and they weren't playing that great, um, but his performance – this past weekend made me even more confident that if Allen does have to miss some time, Trubisky's not really going to have a problem leading this offense. Is there going to be a little bit of like, yeah, it's not going to be like Allen's running the offense. Obviously there'll be some recession there, but Trubisky's going to be able to run this offense because we saw he was much better when you're running up tempo. You're not going, it's like, everything's moving oh, a little surprise, bit faster surprise. when he has the weapons that he needs like the oh. Bills are just a better offense, obviously. 
So when you put a quarterback who has his abilities, who hasn't performed to that point up so like so far to his career, now he has that potential of like if we need him to be that guy, he's not going to be like MVP Mitch Trubisky. Like we'll never hear that. It, I don't I don't care where he goes, what he does. We're not going to ever hear that. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm not I'm not <laughs> willing I'm not willing to concede that one. <laughs> but he gave like, you. He gave you if that, he steps in, I'm comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I'm comfortable yeah. if he steps in. So, very pleased with what we saw from Trubisky. Yeah. The other guy on the offense that, well, two guys on offense that I think were impressive. Gilliam, not for the sake that like there was one tweet saying like, oh, Gilliam was so good, trade Zach Moss. No, definitely not that. But Gilliam at that like flex fullback tight end position where yeah. he has that goal line ability he can give you a couple carries he can still play tight end he's going to be able to be a lead blocker which he had a couple of really nice lead blocks i really like what gilliam can add to this team from the fullback position because they really haven't had that like actual lead blocker since obviously pat demarco has been gone i think gilliam is going to be able to add an extra dimension to the run game specifically because of the holes that he can open up you saw that last week, not not Chicago, uh, the week before that. You saw that against the Lions, right? It was, you know, I, I said it. I said that uh, Gillum is a weapon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say, that, say that. Gillum? Gillum? Gillum. You say that? Gillum? Gillum. That's Gillum? what you're rolling with? Gillum. That's what I'm rolling <laughs> with. Um, I said he was a weapon on offense. It doesn't matter how you pronounce his name. That's He's, <laughs> he's a weapon, right? I said he was a weapon, right? And then you go into the Chicago game and you start seeing them utilize – what he does best, which is exactly what he said he was. He said he was a weapon. He said he, he'll do whatever it takes. Literally, yeah. the dude is doing whatever it takes, whether that's short yardage, whether that's blocking, whether that's catching the ball out of the backfield. He's doing whatever it takes to make this team. He's going to make this team, whether it's a fullback, whether it's a tight end, wh- whatever they want to classify him as, it's weapon, right? So just 52 other people can be classified as a position. He can be moved over to a slot, and it could just say weapon. Which is yeah. wild that we're talking about a fullback. I think I think he weapon. said it himself that like he doesn't look at himself as a tight end. He doesn't look at himself as a fullback. He looks at his position for this team as athlete. I think that's what he said. Athlete, athlete. And, like weapon, athlete, whatever you want to describe him as. He is probably going to be used as that Swiss Army knife. That like obviously we're not going to see like a hundred touches from him this year. But if he gets like I thirty to fifty, <laughs> like I'm I'm okay with that. I'm, yeah. I don't I'm not going to like have any issue with. Gilliam having like short yardage plays ran specifically for him and then just see where it goes. But like, let's pump the brakes on whatever that guy's name was. That was saying, tra- tra- uh, he, Zach was, Moss he was Gilliam. That was, uh, that was, was just insane. He was a clown. Um, it's yeah. funny because like, we've probably gained a lot of uh, uh, listeners, viewers, whatever you want to say. And we've probably lost a ton as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but Hopefully not too the, many. The people that we've gained, right? I wonder if like they they weren't there like last year in season or mm-hmm. in the beginning of of us getting together, right? So they don't know how awful I am with names. They don't know how I mispronounce names. I say random people's names. Like in my mind, though, I know exactly what I'm talking about. So and it's funny. <laughs> it's it's funny that we're about to gain these people. I'm gonna get killed in the comments. It doesn't matter. Whatever. You That's pronounce okay. it how you want to pronounce it. Um, yeah. Moving on. Stevenson is the other guy from the offense. We don't yep. have to really talk about it that much, but like especially, and we'll get into the, the injury stuff in just a Did second. Did I call that? But Stevenson, I, he has definitely played himself into a position where he, if there was not injury, he might have forced the Bills to keep seven. It's looking like they're not going to have to keep seven wide receivers at this point. We, we'll get into that in a second, but Stevenson has put together a very good training camp in preseason thus far. What? So, pat yourself on the back, Casey. I, how dare you? Well, how here's the you? thing. Here's the thing. I would never. I, I, I would never. <laughs> yes, you would all the time. I kept saying the way he was going to make the team, and every time we 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 fought about it, we went after it. It wasn't that I was arguing that he would make the team as a wide receiver. I was arguing that he would make the team as a return guy. And do I think that one return helps him make the team? No, but I think it opens the eyes for the coaching staff to be like, all right, that's the reason why we drafted him. And he went out there and he proved that he can do it, right? And I begged the question on Twitter, um, and I said, how many returns – does this guy have to do before the coaching staff refuses to let him hit waivers, right? Because there's so many teams out there that do not have a good return, man. And if you see somebody returning in preseason, 
another team is probably going to want to kick the tires on it. Yeah, and not only that, but he also did have a couple of big catches against the had, Lions. Yep. So, like, he's put together both being a wide receiver and a special team or asset. And albeit it's not against the starters, but he's shown that he has the ability to do that in an NFL game. So I would be much more worried now that if the Bills tried to cut him and then bring him back on the – It's going to be spot, a lot more I'd be difficult. much more worried that somebody else would pick him up just because it's that what if. And, I mean, it, they're probably not going to have to at this point. Just no, there's, there's not circumstances. injuries. Yeah. Anybody on defense that you want to talk about, I assume you might want to mention – your guy McLeod, because he, he, he didn't another, have a, a big play. Yeah, he had another very, 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 very good um, game. I mean, it just comes down to it. He's everything that Rashad Wild Goose was supposed to be for Bills Mafia. I think that's just the point. Now, Wild Goose had a, a couple of good plays as well. And Much better up, game this week. He stepped Much up better game what it was week. in the Lions game, which you love to see. That's what you want to see in your rookies. You want to see them progress. But at the same time, McLeod, an undrafted you know rookie, is still outplaying him. So, do I think Wild Goose makes the team? No. Do I think McLeod sneaks in there and makes the team? I, I think there's still a big possibility there. Uh, I'm excited to see what's going to happen in this next preseason game because I guarantee the Bills are going to hold out a lot of starters. Um, and I think McLeod's probably going to get to play the whole game. I think, I think especially important. on the defensive side. Yep. I and think that, the offense will play a little bit, but the defensive side, I think you're, we're going to see a lot of those guys fighting to make the roster. Yep, yep. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see that. So I I, I don't know if this isn't a hot take. I've been saying it all week. but uh, And I, I think I texted you and Steve and Dave. I said, uh, uh, Neil's got to go. Like, Neil's cut. Like, I do not think he makes the team. And so, Ron, Neil, yeah. Yeah, yeah you I did mention that. I don't care – what any coach, any player is saying about him. Obviously, the coach isn't going to come out there and say, uh, yeah, he, he messed up. Um, yeah, he sucks. Like, they're not going to do that. He's not going to make the team. He's a really good special teamer, and that's awesome. But if you have these younger guys out there that you could – and I, this gets back to the whole, are we going to talk about special teams, and special teams is important. I agree special teams are important. But I still think that a younger guy can come in there and be a really good special teamer while also providing depth in the future. Whereas Neil, the only thing that he really does well is special teams. So you sit back and it's like, do you really want to continue to roster this guy? Or do you want to take a flyer on, say, somebody like McLeod or uh, Josh Thomas or, 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 or anybody like that? So that's why I think Neil is gone. That's my hot take for the week. And that that's fine. I guess I definitely get where you're coming from with that. Yeah. My thing with Saran Neal is one, a lot of his blunders so far this preseason and in the past have been playing at outside corner. And the coaching staff has very clearly said, like, that's not where we want him to be yeah. if, he, if he has to play on defense. He's still not a great nickel corner if he had to come in there, but he is better there than he is at the outside corner. But he is like they that no nobody shies away from saying. Saran Neal is an elite special teamer. Yeah. All of the coaches say that. He is by no means a lock. Let, let me say that again. <laughs> if you are an elite special teamer, I do not look at you as a lock officially. Sorry that there's some people on Twitter who do think that. You might make the team. It's okay. Oh, but boy, am I taking a shot there. Whatever. Um, but he's not a lock Don't just because of follow us on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a he's not a lock to make the roster just because he is a great special teamer. But I do think that matters. You can only cut so many of those guys who are great special Correct. teamers and not great elsewhere. And so he he has to have you have to have some guys who can step in there and be that great special teamer. Him, Taiwan Jones. Those guys are elite gunners on this team. You need those guys. So I, yeah. it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the defensive line. It's preseason. Like, let's not get too overly excited. But this defensive line looks like it's going to be a lot better in terms of pass rushing. Like, Correct. I'm excited to see what happens when everybody's going against starters because A.J. Epinesa, like, he, he might have just – he might have just made the Bears starting left tackle their backup. Yeah. He, he yeah. literally put him in the dirt. Yeah. Like that, that play what just blew my mind. Greg yeah. Rousseau looks like he's just a man amongst boys out there sometimes because he's just getting pushed. He's, he's such – like being – what is he, 6'7"? Six, 6'7", seven. Six, seven, yep. Being as big as he is, as tall as he is, as long as he is, 
being able to get that push, if he gets leverage on an offensive lineman at all, it's over. Like it's, it's over for them. Yeah. So he done. can bull rush. He can like he can get around the edge if he needs to. Basham, I know that. he's still working on that, but he can do it. Basham yeah. looks a lot better than people are giving him credit for. He's not making those splash plays as much, but he's still getting after it. Obata, he's he wasn't really a stat sheet guy, but he got after it. Like these guys are all working. And then yep. you add back in Jerry Hughes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like th- yeah. this it has the makings of a very good defensive yep. line if they put it all together in the regular season. So that that's kind of where I'm at. I think that mostly covers everything unless you had something yeah, else. Yeah, well, you I want to talk I about wanna say here. um Butler playing into the end of the fourth quarter, right? Um that just screams that he's probably going to get cut. I understand a lot of people are saying trade him. I understand there's a lot of cap implications, which is Casey's big word of the week. Um, If you do cut him, you're eating a lot of dead cap. But if you're playing him well into the quarter preseason game, that's telling teams that he's probably not going to make the roster. So what trade value? Potentially. Potentially, right? So what trade value are you going to get? Now, we love as fans to say Brandon Bean is a wizard, and I understand that. I truly believe he is a wizard if you pull something off with with uh, Vernon Butler. So you're going to have trades coming out um, here in the next week, and I would say Vernon Butler would be one of those trades to watch out for. If not, he's cut, but he's not making the team as, as a rotational player. We'll see. I, I might have something interesting for you. Um, so That's injuries, fine. injuries. We have to yep. talk about that. The Bills are bit by the injury bug right now. Um, obviously, the big one is Isaiah McKenzie took a shot from Jordan Poyer. I, it sounded like, obviously, it was an inadvertent to be as big of a hit as it was. Either yep. way, McKenzie's in a sling right now. Not 100% sure at the moment of this recording like what is officially the diagnosis, but it sounds like he could end up being out for a little bit. Not great considering – it sounded like the Bills wanted to use him a little bit more this year and his role in the offense was going to – yeah, so I I don't love that he's going to be missing time, but that opens up the door for Marquez Stevenson a lot considering how he's played so far. The other guys, I mean, Antonio Williams, uh, Stevenson does have a foot injury, but it sounded like he was at least getting in a little bit of work. Uh, Tommy Sweeney, Spencer Brown missed time with a, a knee soreness today. Uh I mean, Harrison Phillips, Dane Jackson, Jaquan Johnson, Teron Johnson, Levi Wallace, the secondary, the corners specifically, that's where I'm a little nervous. If those, if like, if Levi Wallace and Dane Jackson both are not able to get back on the field before week one, I like that makes me very nervous. So we, that's definitely something that we have to watch moving forward over the next, what, two weeks by the time this comes yeah. out before game day. So just something to pay attention to. Nothing that I'm going to be real concerned about just yet, but just like I said last week with Stefan Diggs, heal up. Like we just want you on the field. <laughs> just, please, just please heal up. That, that's what sucks about preseason. Everybody's saying I don't want Josh to take a snap. I I, I do. I want him to take a snap. I mean, injuries happen regardless of whether it's preseason or regular season. So uh, I can always ask, what's the difference between this game and the next game? Well, well, yeah. this one doesn't matter. I get it, whatever. I, I still want to see him out there. But if the coaching staff is like, you know what? We've been hit with the injury bug, which, by the way, the Bills have been very, very you know good about that. Then they just hold him out. I'm okay with that, too. But at the end of the day, the Bills have been hit with the injury bug. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the three players we're looking at this week during the game against the Packers, uh, last preseason game, some guys that are going to be fighting for a roster spot. Some guys might already have a roster spot. I got to go. We, don't, we still this don't one. really know how people are going to like how the Bills are going to play everybody. I would assume that it's probably going to be half and half. Give the starters a little bit of a chance to to see what they can do, get in rhythm, and then give everybody else playing for a roster spot the second half. That's kind of how I expect it to happen. But we'll see. My three guys, though. I'll go first, then you can go, and then we'll give our 53 projection, and that'll be it for the intro. My three guys, I got Matt Breida. I liked what I saw from him last week, especially considering the fact that Antonio Williams is out again. Like He's yeah. still missing time with that injury. I want to see – Not. I think Breida's just going to make the team. I'm not really like questioning that at this point. I want to see, is he going to do enough to make himself be a guy who they activate week one yeah. potentially? Because if he plays the way he played against the Bears, he's really making a case for himself to potentially be activated. If he plays the way he played against the Lions, 
then he's just a rostered running back who will not be activated on game day. So Correct. which Matt Breda are we going to get? Are we going to get the guy that we all hope he is? Or are we going to get the guy that is like, uh, well, we'll see. Yeah. So that's that's the first guy. Marcus Stevenson is the next one because I want to see what he can do in if a he plays. different role. If he yeah. plays, yes. If he plays, and that's definitely a big caveat, but if he plays, I want to see what he can do in – a different role or a bigger role potentially where he's playing against maybe, maybe he plays against starters. Maybe he doesn't, but he's going to get a lot more time if he is good to go this weekend. So I'm really excited to see if he can put together another preseason game. Cause if he puts together another good preseason game, the dude's just a stone cold lock at that point. But that's if he does that. Let's if go. Casey. <laughs> Yeah, no, kudos to you. You were yeah. you were right on that. Yeah, I'm right about not, a lot of things. We just take I, it for granted. I did not well, well, I, well, we'll hold back on that one. I, I didn't know. Gregory Russo, <laughs> Spencer Brown. I mean, Marco if you if you Stevenson. say enough different things, yeah, you're gonna be right about some. Stevenson All is right, the I'll, one. Hold on, no, no, no. Stevenson uh, is the one that you have been consistent on the entire time. Well, I the reason I say that is because with Spencer Brown and with Greg Rousseau, you did not have them on every single one of your drafts that you did. You had them on a couple of different ones and you had them in the last one that you did. I, I will so, say once again, I kudos will to you. say I will say Greg Rousseau, I know we're running out of Greg Rousseau is the only one that I did not consistently have on there because I was flip flopping back on him. Spencer right. Brown I took off because I was like, I've put him on there so many times they gotta go over to the different player. So hey, moving you know on. <laughs> still, still didn't. The last guy that I have though yep. is Tommy Doyle, and it's for the same th- the same reason that we said before. He's a drafted player. I wanna see if he can put together enough this week to make a case for him to make the roster. Or is it gonna end up being one of those cases where they have an injury and he goes IR and then he sits for the year and they protect him that way because he was still what, like a a fifth round draft pick, fourth round, whatever he was. Tommy Doyle, Tommy Doyle, fourth or fifth. I think he was a fourth round draft pick. Uh, Was he? Yes. Yeah. 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 He was a fourth rounder. So being that he has that potential, you want to make sure that you protect him. Is he going to be protected by being on the roster or is he going to be protected by, potentially just sitting out the year on IR or however they kind of finagle that. So those are my three guys, Matt Breda, Marquez Stevenson, if he plays, and then Tommy Doyle. Who you got, Casey? Um, so I'm going to go quickly through it. Cam Lewis is probably the biggest one on defense. I want to see how Cam Lewis uh, really plays um, with Dane Jackson and Levi out, right? Because I think if you're going to grade them, you're going to go uh, Trey, Levi, Dane, cam right and then you're gonna make Mm -hmm. your way down right so i want to see if cam can separate himself from nick mcleod and then on the outside of that i've already talked about nick mcleod but can nick mcleod actually make a case for being better than cam lewis and do we need cam lewis right because what a trajectory for an undrafted a free agent to pass right cam lewis somebody who's been in the system for a little bit so i definitely want to look at nick mcleod and then for the same reason wild goose right there's been so much hype around him Granted, just for his name, right? But there's been a lot of hype around him. He's a solid tackler. Uh, he lacks being an outside corner. I think that's something that he struggles with. But, right, how is he going to give the final preseason game? Like, what is he going to do in the final preseason game for the coaching staff to be like, you know what? I do want him on the on the practice squad. Or mm-hmm. they're just going to wash their hands from him. So th- those three people that I want to see, I want to focus primarily on the defense. I want to find my pr- primarily focus on, on the cornerbacks because I want to see how that yeah I am I want to see how that <laughs> lines up in the back end so those are my three guys I'm looking at Cam Lewis Nick McLeod and uh, Rashad Wild Goose. All right, so I'm going to go through my offensive projection. Then you can tell me where you differ. I have to double check my math on this to make sure I have the right amount of guys. So that's why I want to do offense and then defense. Kind of split it up there. Us. Somebody will do it for us, but I want to make sure that I still have it right. I hope. This is going to end up looking even worse now when I end up getting it wrong, but oh, whatever. Goodness. QB, I just have two guys, Alan Trubisky, that's it. <sighs> Running wrong. back, Singletary, Moss, Breda, Taiwan Jones. I got them keeping four. Fullback, I'm, they're keeping Reggie Gilliam. I, like, I don't think that there's a reason why. Five they running backs, let's run. Him. Sure, five running backs, want to call it that. Uh, wide receivers, I have them keeping six now. I originally was going to say seven until the I, Isaiah McKenzie injury happened. Because I think Stevenson played himself into a position where you cannot subject him to waiver. So I have Diggs, Beasley, Sanders, Davis, Kumaro, and Stevenson. I don't care if you don't like it. He is that special teamer that they. It seems like they really he, like. 
he's making the team because I was even going to get hurt. Uh, sure, call it what you want to call it. You need to hurry up. Yeah, we got time for this. Tight end, I got Dawson Knox, Jacob Hollister. That's it. Two tight ends. I think. Yep. I think if Sweeney is around, it's because he's either on the practice squad or he's on IR. IR um, yep. Offensive line, I got Morse, Feliciano, Ford, Bacher, Bates. That's five tackles. I have Dawkins, Williams, Spencer Brown, and I think Tommy Doyle plays his way in. I think he does. So I'm really okay. taking a chance on that. So that's that's what I have. Do you have any different like uh, players on offense? I think the biggest thing that I have is is um, I would not be surprised if Taiwan Jones does not make the roster, um, and then T- uh, Tommy Doyle not making the cut and going on the practice squad. I think those are the only two that I really differ on. The Kumaro pick, I get it. He's making the team. Whatever. Let's move on. Uh, he won't be on the team for long. Okay. Um, so then my other guys that I have, defense, I, so I did actually have the wrong number. I had the wrong number of players there. Um, but here's what I have. I have defensive end, Jerry Hughes, Epinesa, Rousseau, Addison, Obata, Basham, and Daryl Johnson. I've been keeping seven defensive ends. I just don't see why or how they could cut one of those guys. Like they're, They all – seem like they're going to be necessary and they've played well enough. And if you get rid of one of them, they're not they're like, those are the types of guys who are not making it to the practice squad. So yeah. if you get rid of them, you're losing them. So I think they have to keep them around. I have them keeping four defensive tackles. I have Ed Oliver, Star Latule, Justin Zimmer, and I have Butler. I only have them keeping Butler because of Harrison Phillips injury. If it ends up being an injury that, and this is all if it's like a longer term injury, if it's an injury they want to just take a little slower, rehab, toss him on IR, keep Butler around until Harrison Phillips is healthy and back, and then drop him. But I I don't think that they're going to drop Vernon Butler right away. It's just not the way I see this going. Um, And then I have linebackers, Edmonds, Milano, AJ Klein, uh, Tyler Medikevich, I have and, is Andre Smith. Am I, I, I only did last names on this. Andre Smith, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I thought I was remembering that right. Need to double check. And then I have Terrell Dodson. No, actually, Dodson's the guy that I cut out. He's going practice squad. I just don't I, – I wanted to put six on for linebackers, but I just couldn't, I couldn't do it because I don't think they play l- enough linebackers in the game. I think Dodson's a guy who gets brought up, put back down, brought up, put back down, that sort of thing. Cornerbacks, I have obviously Trey White, no brainer. You're going to go there. Trey White, Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson. I have Saran Neal because of his special teams play. He's a guy who I could see starting the season on the roster, not ending the season on the roster. We'll see. But then Teron Johnson, and I think they keep Wild Goose just because he's a draft pick. I, I, I'm i stuck with that. They, they, oh, I'm not going to argue with They value their it. draft picks. That's, and that's fair. He, I'm, I'm also betting on that he has a good enough game to warrant that's, making the decision based off of that. So this is all fair. this is all based off of, like, I'm trusting that this is going to happen. That's I'm fair. trusting he's going to put together another game like he did against Chicago, not Detroit. If he plays like he did against Detroit, he's practice squad. I am fully aware of that. And then four safeties. I don't think Jaquan Johnson makes this team. Yeah. I think it's going to end up being Poyer Hyde, Josh Thomas, DeMar Hamlin, and then obviously the special team guys. We know who they're at, they are. So where do you differ? And then let's wrap this up. Uh, I do differ on the Wild Goose um, one, but I will not argue in depth because I've used the argument they like their draft picks. I understand that side of it. I just think Nick McLeod is outplaying him. So if you have to take one or the other, you, you take the one that's playing better and has a, well, I'm not going to say higher ceiling, but – um, I, I would take Nick McLeod over that, and I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be, be, you know, down the middle. I'm not trying to sit there and be like, I like McLeod better. I don't like Wild Goose, but I understand your side of it. I do differ on that one, so I'd swap McLeod out. Um, I do differ on the Vernon Butler because Fa um, can play inside and outside. They have had him playing inside outside, so mm-hmm. if it does come down to it, and they're like, let's get rid of Vernon Butler. He's literally wasting a spot for us. Ship him out, cut him, do whatever we need to do. But he doesn't belong in this roster, which is the truth. Um, throw an FA in there in the middle, let him swap in and out uh, on certain plays, whatever. Um, and I think there's one other that I differed on. Um, no, I think that was it. 
No, linebacker's I think fine. You went one for one with all those. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's the only thing that I differ on. Um, Daryl Johnson, maybe, but at the same time, it's like I get it. Like I do, I understand why. But you know, you, know, you made a good point. Like if they're not on the team, right? If you're they're, they're, yeah. not, they're not making the practice squad. So at that point, it's like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna see trades. We have such a talented roster from top to bottom. Whether it's our undrafted guys, whether it's you know the the folks that's not gonna make the the fifty three man. Like it's very, very, very. Uh, Talented, so you're gonna see a lot of trades by McBee, right? You can't. I think just we let see. I think we see one. I, I don't know if we're gonna be able to see a lot, but I think uh, we see one. Over under three. Under. At, uh, yeah, I, I take I, that. Under. I take. I take. I take that back. Over under two. <laughs> I I think you have to go two and a half, but two and I and still half. say under. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I, saying, I think two is the absolute max that we see. I don't think we see more than that. I, I think we see three. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. So that that I mean that covers it for our our intro. We're going to transition over now to the uh, the AFC East crossover series. Wow. Totally. Totally just got messed up there. AFC's crossover series with the Patriots. We got two guys from the Deer Pats Nation podcast, Ray and Connor. So we're going to transition over to uh, our stuff with them now. All right, let's welcome on our special guests. We have Connor and we have Ray. They are from the Deer Pats Nation podcast. Um, obviously, they're going to be stepping in to help out with um, the Patriots side of things because we are not Patriots fans over here. So we need their input. We need to get some questions answered so we can get our own little scouting report done for the Patriots leading into the season. Connor, Ray, what's up, guys? What's going on, man? appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us on. We like the Friday night with the enemy, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I do want to make a point to point out to the, the viewers and the listeners that um, Dear Pats Nation is not D-E-E-R. Um, it's D-E-A-R. Okay? <laughs> just in, just in right. case you're... Just in case you're gonna look it up, go there, listen to them, blah, blah blah. I do. I just wanted to point that out for everybody out there. I made that mistake. Probably so. it's probably a confusing. fair assumption for. Yeah. You know, I, I assume we don't really attract the uh, most intelligent listeners all the time. You know, some of the no, things we get no. into. So for those of for those of our listeners who are maybe not the most intelligent, definitely ca- take Casey's advice there. But. I'm sure we have some very smart. We're going to fit in here perfectly, Connor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can tell already. Good. Okay. <laughs> That's a All good right, sign. So, so let's let's just hop right in. We got we, we have to talk about the the whole quarterback situation. What's going yes. on right now? I know Casey, yeah. you wanted to get into this. So I'll, I'll leave this one to you to start out. Yeah, man. So. um I had this all written out because Nat makes me prepare, which is the dumbest thing in the world. But my biggest question <laughs> is, it's coming out. It's leaking, right? Which does not happen a lot in the Pats organization. Uh, yeah. But it's leaking that people within the Pats organization, are they're mad at Cam Newton because of this whole COVID situation. And that is opening the door to Mac Jones. My question is, is that such a bad thing? Like, should should we be upset that Cam, as a as a fan, as a Pats fan, as a Bills fan, like obviously we want Cam Newton to start, right? But should we want Mac Jones <laughs> to start, you. or do we want do we want Cam Newton to start? Like, how are y'all feeling? Are y'all like, okay, sure, fine, be mad at Cam? Like, I don't care. We want to see our new shiny toy start to begin with. So, what, what oh. what's your thoughts on that? Thank God you gave us the opportunity to talk about this because we just <laughs> <laughs> it just hasn't come up in our conversations as of late. Uh, You're listen, listen. <laughs> Uh, I'll give you my opinion, Connor, and give you his. I think we both kind of sit the same. Uh, I don't want to see Mac Jones until week five. I'm going to be totally honest with you. It has wow. nothing to do At with his least, ability. Yeah. My biggest fear in the world is week four. Tom Brady walks into Gillette Stadium and lays an absolute beating on the Patriots, and they got a good defense, and they play a beating on Mac Jones, and that kid's brain is fried going forward. And you've seen <laughs> it. You've seen young quarterbacks get off to bad starts. Um, he seems like he's pretty mentally tough. Uh, it's a tough place to play. It's a tough fan base to play for. Everybody, Mac Jones is the shiny new toy right now, but all he needs to do is fumble against Buffalo, you know, on the 20-yard line with 30 <laughs> seconds left in the game, and 
and that he's, right. no, he's no longer shiny. Just ask Cam Newton the feelings after that, right? Because if I got to hear about that fumble one more time, I might hang myself. <laughs> like, just, just put myself out of the misery. Um, Do it on the podcast. So, real quick, the uh, next question yeah, is like, Justin views. Zimmer, Bill's defensive lineman, caused that. No, I don't, I, we don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. know the guy who did it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we, we uh, would too. Yeah. I mean, you, you talk about not wanting to see him until week five. Um, and you talk about how, you know, you know, Pat's Gillette Stadium. It's a it's a rough place to play and and stuff like that. And um, the kid played at Alabama, right? Does it yeah. worry you that he played at Alabama? You know, seeing all the quarterbacks, all the great quarterbacks that have come out of Alabama in the past. Does it worry you at all that he played at Alabama? Do you would you rather just have Cam start until you know it's just to the point where you're like, okay, well we're two and two. Can we please just see Mac Jones? Yeah, that that's my hope. I hope I you know I think in a perfect world, Cam Newton does good enough. Like, to yeah. be honest, and Connor, I won't take up all the time. I'll just send it to you in a sec. But uh, and, and, if in a perfect world, we're fighting for a wild card spot. To be perfectly honest, I don't think that we can compete with Buffalo yeah. this year, even with our team. Um, so, and, and this is why we're beginning. We're Damn getting right. Real, well, we're very <laughs> hated. <laughs> fans. But I don't think we can really. I think Buffalo is, like, really good. Uh, you know, I've told Rico a thousand times this story. But I was on another, like, AFC East roundtable three years ago and I made the prediction that Josh Allen was going to be the best quarterback in the division. That's at the time when Sam Darnold was on the pedestal. And I was like, just wait, I said, wait till this kid develops. He's going to be good. And you're starting to see it in front of you. Diggs is a, is an asshole, you know, that because he's on Buffalo, because he's on Buffalo. And the two yeah, of them are throwing up, throwing up the deuces. Two, but no, but he's good. I, I meant to say, cause they're on Buffalo. They're both assholes, right? If they were on no, the New fair. England, I'd love them. And you guys would just all be haters, but they're really good. So, Perfect World Cam can lead us to a wild card. I know the expectations are through the goddamn roof right now for Patriot fans, but I told Connor said even after all the free agent signings, I'm prepared for another eight win season and I'd be okay with it. Like I'd rather have one more bad year. Patriot fans, especially ones who became fans in 2010 is what I like to call them. You know, the 2010 <laughs> fans, they don't know. I was a fan. Yeah, that's you the know, truth. I was a fan in the nineties. So and it was good in the 90s. We had Drew Bledsoe. Like, things were right. good. But it wasn't what we got to go through, you know, from 14 and on kind of thing. So they're not used to these, you know, a losing season and not making the playoffs. I'd be cool missing it one more year, giving Mac Jones a year to sit, being at a decent draft pick again, and then go. I'd rather have one more bad year and go for it for the next five, six, seven years again than try to really go for it this year and put ourselves in a position. However, Belichick went and spent $160 million in guaranteed money, so there might be a little bit of pressure from Mr. Kraft that he gets out there and gets his ass in motion. Connor, what do you think, man? I, I think yeah. talked a lot. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I'm not prepared to just sell out and put Mac Jones out there. I think right now it's Cam's job to lose, even despite him missing the past four or five games. And everybody on Twitter obviously reported Mac Jones was the superstar today, which is all great. But, I mean, he's still a rookie. And if we've seen anything in the NFL, it's that rookies have benefited from sitting for a year. You know, we look at guys like Aaron Rodgers. Uh, Patrick Mahomes obviously sat behind Alex Smith for a year. I mean, it's more beneficial usually when these guys wait and they get an opportunity to play behind somebody else like Cam Newton. So I, I would prefer to have Cam Newton come out and start. I think the only thing is if he's as bad as he was last season, that Bill Belichick is going to go to mm -hmm. Mac Jones at some point. I don't know what week that'll be, but we'll we'll have to see. Best case scenario, Cam Newton plays well. The Patriots are competitive. And then next season, I think absolutely without a doubt, it's the Mac Jones show for the foreseeable future. There was also to, there was to also imagine. a Tom Brady kid who sat for years. Tom well. Brady yeah. Tom Brady sat. Tom Brady sat, yeah. Who? I would I would have to imagine <laughs> yeah. that if if Cam plays the way he played last year and honestly like the last 3 years. Which part of last year though? Uh, I'm sorry, not not talking about the first two games. Yeah. <laughs> that was about three, it. Three. three. It was three. Games. Okay. He, was, yeah. he did. I will say he started off the season Up a lot better COVID. than yeah, up until COVID. I think this yeah. was it. The the game against the Seahawks was that was that his was, last game. That was phenomenal. That was, his, no, that was, was that second, second week. They played. Okay. I Raiders. thought he was going to be a star. <laughs> well, they were two and one at, right before he got COVID. They were two and one, and their right. lo their loss was to Seattle, which could have been a win. He played great against Miami. He, he was solid against. He Miami. ran the ball well. He Very ran the ball solid ran against the ball Miami. Well. Yeah. Yeah, open it up against Seattle, open it up against the Raiders, and then COVID happened. And well, you guys saw the rest of the season. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, so I, I don't. I, I, I obviously I didn't watch all of his games, so I don't know how much I would be able to blame on 
COVID versus just his shoulder. Because when I watched him play against the Bills, he looked like 2019, 2018 Cam, where his shoulder was just a mess. So I would, if I was a Patriots fan, that's probably what I would be most worried about in terms of if you don't want Mac Jones to play right away, hoping Cam's shoulder is actually good to go this year as opposed to kind of being up in the air about it. Like, is, is right. that a fair? Let, can I throw a question back at you? Yeah, yeah. How did you enjoy the AFC Championship game last year? The AFC Championship game? I really enjoyed Sorry. the lead-up to it. Yeah, the lead-up, whatever. But how did you <laughs> enjoy going to the AFC Championship game? That's Oh, it was, it was incredible. That I mean, that was the best year of sports fandom in my life. I, like, I, I'm an Ohio State fan in football. I'm a Cavaliers fan for basketball. So, like, I have experienced my team winning a championship, but, like, nowhere near the level of Bills fandom. So – being able to see the Bills ascend to what they were last year after going through really never being good my entire life, that was like by far the best experience as a fan I've ever had. How do you feel going into this? By the way, I'm an OSU guy too. I got to talk to you about Justin Fields before this thing is over. But okay, yeah. How, how do you guys feel going into this season? I, I expect that this year will be I, – I think there's a lot of expectations that it has to be a Super Bowl this year. Obviously, that's the goal. I think the Bills have all the tools in place to actually get there as long as they stay healthy, as long as people perform the way we expect them to or close to it. But they have to still continue to put those pieces together and build off of what they did last year because if they don't do that, then things could fall apart really quick. But I think they have everything in place. They have the foundation in place with the coaching staff, with the the front office to actually keep everything together and keep building. And you have a leader with Josh Allen the team kind of rallies around him. So I, I'm excited for this year, and I think that we have a lot of good things coming. Like I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. That's my as point. Long as, as, right. as, as long as Jake Kumro is on our roster, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Super Bowl or a bus. I got to get one. All right, I'm, get done. one I'm done. I'm going to go back to the corner. All right, continue <laughs> talking, guys. That's my point, though. Right, I'd rather go through one more bum ass season with a bum ass shoulder and be in your guys' position for the next four, five, six, seven years, which you will be. You're not going to fall off the rails after this season. I know no, it's right. we have no not a reason to. Yeah, not as, not as long as you have McDermott and Allen. Now, yeah. you're, his contract's going to get in the way now, so you may not be able to be as dominant as you were, but you'll be in there every year. There'll be expectations for playoffs. That's where I want to be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And I would rather just ease Mac Jones in. There's too many Patriot fans that want it now. I'm like, why are we so we're, – we're, okay. City of Boston. Me. This is for the city of Boston. <laughs> we told our fan base we were coming here. By the way, tell us when this is coming out so we can let them know. But, yeah, yeah. Right? We told the we, we city of Boston. Chill the fuck out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, go three seasons without a championship – right? Relax, breathe, and then they're right in the mix. You've got every other sports franchise right now in the mix for a championship. Let the Patriots have another year to chill. We don't need a Super Bowl three years after we won a Super Bowl because we suck again and we're, we're just this oh god this desperate fan base that just you know like it's it's been three years since we won a super bowl you then they sit there and go well i don't know why people hate us so much eh? they're just they hate hate us because they ain't us i'm like no they hate us because we're arrogant pricks i go that don't fucking have any sense of reality so i'd rather go through another season that that that's tough knowing we've got this kid which let's face it what's the last big alabama quarterback right we've got this kid who is got a potential to be good in a division that in the next year or so could be the best division in football and have the you know yeah. the best at least the best quarterback conference if if everybody turns out even though I think two is going to be a bum um and he'll be the third best Alabama quarterback in the league behind Jalen Hurts and Mac Jones but it's you know what I mean it's if but even if he turns out to be who he is shout out to my boy TD but if um if he turns out to be who he is um, with uh, Howdy Doody down in New York and then Josh Allen and <laughs> Mac Dude. Jones. I mean, this division is wrapping up in the next two, three years when the Jets finally catch up to being a tough, tough division to, right. to win. And I'd rather be ready to compete there than do something to screw this kid up this year and just let him let him learn to be a quarterback. Let him learn to, to be in the NFL, learn behind Cam, who's a great leader. You no, know, it doesn't matter how bum his yeah, shoulder is. Yeah. He's a great leader. Let him learn. 
Yeah, right. players, players love him. So let's, Connor, I'll put this one to you. I think, Ray, you were the one who mentioned free agency and all the money spent uh, yep. earlier. Does it worry you some of the contracts that were given out? Like, I think I think Matthew Judon, incredible signing, works yep. great for you guys. But Definitely. then I look at, like, tight end, and personally, I think it was a little too much money spent there. I think there was probably too much money given out to the wide receivers. But I'm right. also not a fan of the team, so I'm, I look at it a little bit differently than you guys might. Do you have any worries that some of the contracts that were given out are going to potentially hinder the future building process? Or are you just happy that they brought in different talent that's uh, honestly like it's far and away better than what was on the roster yeah. last year offensively? I mean, a little bit of both because we have talked about it before on our show that we think that they might have slightly overpaid for people. Nelson Aguilar in particular being one of them because they have gone out and given big contracts to multiple people. Thankfully, I think I have faith in Bill Belichick to have structured them the right way. I know obviously this year they finally had a ton of money to spend and they took full advantage of it. But I know Bill Belichick has also been banking on the new contract with the NFL and the Patriots having bigger cap space as it goes forward. So I'm sure he's kind of manipulated the contracts to the best of his ability. So he's going to be able to open up cap space in the next few years. But on paper, just when I saw it, I did think he overpaid as of right now for some of the guys like Nelson Aguilar, potentially Hunter Henry. But at the same time, they had no choice. They had a terrible offense last year. They had to go out there and spend money, and that's what it was going to take to get these guys in and for the Patriots offense to become competitive again. So, I mean, I guess three, four years from now, hopefully Bill's figured it out where he can turn things around as far as the cap space goes. So with Hunter Henry specifically, that I wasn't as surprised by the John o. Smith signing just because yep. I expected that like both of them got the money I expected them to get individually, but I was surprised to see them both get that from the same team. And oh, Hunter absolutely. Henry a little bit more specifically, just because personally I don't like paying guys with a big injury history, yep. and he has an extensive injury history. It is he probably the guy that would worry you guys the most in terms of that money or – because of his high potential, like it's not, it'd be somebody else. Where, where do you land on that? I'm definitely a little bit nervous about Hunter Henry because I don't think he's played an entire season since he's come into the NFL. I'd have to look up to confirm that, but that's obviously a concern because Bill Belichick said last year when he was talking about Ryan Izzo, the best ability is availability. So if the guy's not out there, it doesn't matter how good he can be. And as soon as they signed Jonu Smith, I figured Hunter Henry was completely off the table. I kind of stopped paying attention to where he might end up in free agency. So I was absolutely shocked to see Bill go out there and sign both of them. But at the same time, the Patriots have always been successful when they've had that two tight end duo. They obviously had Hernandez Gronkowski before that. They had Daniel Graham and Ben Watson when he was in mm -hmm. their prime. So they, when they can utilize that good two tight end set, and if both Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry can stay healthy, which obviously is the biggest concern with Hunter Henry, then I think it's going to be worth the investment and it'll be worth the money in the cap space. Obviously, if Hunter Henry can't stay on the field or if Jonu Smith gets injured, a little bit less of a worry with him than Obviously, it's going to be a lot of money not well spent, but on, on paper, I, I like what they have set up. It's something you might not get as a Buffalo fan, but I think a lot of us Patriot fans, we've experienced so we're good with. We paid another big tight end a lot of money not to play a full season almost every year. You know what I mean? We went through That's a whole super, yeah. we went through a whole Super Bowl run without him. So it's us losing our best tight end is is not a is not a new thing. Uh, and I love Johnny Smith. I thought Johnny Smith was the better signing anyway. So like yep. for me, I don't hold a lot of worry uh, in Hunter Henry because it's just, it's, it's just old hat for us at this point. Yeah. I, I definitely, if they're both healthy, I don't love the whole two tight end sets that they can run against Buffalo. Cause oh, that's no, been a, not. that's been an issue for the bills over the last, however many years before I'll give Casey the next question, but I will give one concession on the wide receivers, something that I don't know if a lot of people have brought up, but, kind of to play devil's advocate for everything the Bills Mafia has said to about those signings. We went through that just like two or three years ago. Very different scenario because Josh Allen already had the year under his belt and he was starting his ascent. But when they signed John Brown, when they signed Cole Beasley, everybody was like, oh, you gave them how much? And then right. it ended up working out really well. Like I said, definitely a different scenario because Josh Allen was playing or played better that year than – I think we probably expect Cam to play, yeah. but 
we could, we've seen stuff like that work out. So I, I also think that it was probably overpaying for the wide receivers, but you got to do what you got to do to bring talent in. So, but Nelson Aguilar is only a two year deal. So yeah. next year he'll get one year with Mac. I think that we got Jacoby Myers, who yep. I think is you guys, I don't know if you're familiar with Underrated. him. Underrated. Underrated. Yeah, he's going to have his welcome to the NFL moment this year. I think like it's, he's been predicted by a lot of sort of the outside media as being one of those not even a dark horse anymore to hit those thousand yards. He had 700 last year. He's very, very quietly a really good receiver. And I think him and Kendrick Bourne are there for Mac Jones. I think Aguilar is here for this year to try to get the stretch game. Don't forget, when you look at this initial offense, tight ends and a, and a, and a deep receiver, that's a Cam Newton offense mm-hmm. with, with, with a good right. running back behind him, right? That's that you know that's Steve Smith and uh, oh, Greg Olson. Greg Olson, right? Like yeah. that's it, That's sort of his setup. Whereas I think you're going to see Bourne and Myers. They'll be involved this year, and I think Myers could have his, his big year. But when Mac Jones gets on the field, that's where I think you'll, those two. Kendrick Bourne is going to be our next Julian Edelman. Maybe not production of what he did, but everybody keeps thinking Myers is going to be our next big slot guy to replace Edelman. But I really think it's going to be Kendrick Bourne that goes into that spot. Interesting. Um, I, I'm going to say this by saying that I, I love Bill Belichick. Um, nice. I absolutely do. I, I do, and, I, and I'm still sure respect him. Respect yeah. him. I, well, I, no, I, I, I love him as a coach. Like, I think, like, that's awesome. Like, you know, back back in the day when I wanted to uh, to coach football, like, I was all about Bill Belichick. I was like, people were like, "You're a Bills fan? Why do you?" Is like, the dude is like, he he comes up with the the wildest stuff. I, I'll never forget the the playoff game against the Ravens um, when he shifted the D line, right? Yep. And 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 it pissed everybody off, right? Uh, and and it came down to like, oh, that's that's illegal, and oh, nope, it's in the rule book. Like y'all just right. don't know it. Like just just knowing that he goes in into detail like that. So the I'm ineligible receiver, this. the yes. ineligible receiver. He, just, yeah. he always Shane, seems Shane to come up with something. Yeah, he always right. comes yeah, up with Shane something. Marine. So so I I preface this by saying that right. Um, he sucks ass at, at drafting, doesn't he? Right. <laughs> right. Let's 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 I'm I'm just, gonna, just I'm gonna it, give a caveat to that. Early round just, picks. I, yeah, I don't there we go. Right. There we go. We've, early we've, round picks. It's it's tough early round picks. Back yeah. In history. yeah, cause we've made we we oh fuck, this is an argument we have all <laughs> yeah. the time with Patriots fans. Okay, well, yes. If, if you want to keep pointing to Sony Michelle and Nikhil Harry because they had a good interview, I was yeah. about to. Yeah. I was yeah. about to point out Sony Michelle. <laughs> you know, but what we point to is Joe Tooney, who just became the highest paid offensive lineman sure. in the NFL. David Andrews, Belichick guy. David Andrews, who I think yeah. was number three center rated by PFF last year. Was right. he undrafted? I think David Andrews undrafted. Was undrafted. He was UDFA, he was but I count that all as a part of the same thing. You got sure. Shaq Mason. Um, Mike on you know, last Mike, year in the Mike fifth round. Mike on who was actually one of the top rated rookies in the league, was a fifth round draft pick. You know, right. we 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 do this thing with a Colts fan who comes on once a week, and he once said to us, he said, you know, yeah, okay, you know, the Colts are really good at getting wide receivers and running backs, and we've actually been okay. Damon Harris is an okay little running back that they picked up. Ramondre Stevenson's probably going to be a steal. James White has turned out to be a pretty good draft pick. He's been for there them. for twenty mm-hmm. years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's been there since sixteen. But uh, you well, know, he, twenty years. His production, yeah, 20 years in, the NFL, production in the playoffs man. feels like it. He was yeah, yeah, draft it pick. Let's not forget <laughs> Sony Sony Michelle. I mean, is he a draft bust? They they sat on his back in the playoffs and won a Super Bowl on his back. Like they really did. The the passing game could do nothing. That guy had all three of his playoff games were three hundred or were one hundred and twenty yard games. You know what I mean? He scored the only touchdown. Literally, if it wasn't for Sony Michelle, we never would have went to the Super Bowl. They never would have beat Kansas City. If you really go and look at what he did in that playoffs, him and James Devlin. So if a guy runs you to a Super Bowl, can he really be a draft bust? Being picked That's at fair. number being picked at number 31. Also, okay. let's see what happens now. Because I mean, listen, this guy's picking at 31 and 32 every year. Those are second round picks. Basically, sure. you know what I mean? Two yeah. picks later, one pick later is a second rounder, not a first rounder. However, if you keep going through that list, if you look at the guys, the Chase Winoviches of the world, right? Um, if you look at the Jonathan Jones, the JC, okay, JC was an undrafted, but yeah. he picks him up as an undrafted free agent. Yes, the wide receiver mark has been a miss yeah. in different ways. I think that, um, who was that kid in 16 that got injured? Connor. Malcolm um, Mitchell. Malcolm Mitchell. Malcolm Mitchell. That was sad. That actually, that that actually was sad. He, he only got to play one year. 
you know, yeah, and he that was had a bad, great yeah. playoffs in his rookie. He had a great rookie season. Yeah. It looked like he was set up and then his knees just, just gave out on him. Right. And he was all of a sudden a healthy or all of a sudden he was on the IR the next year and we never seen him again. He tried yeah. and couldn't come back. Yeah. So I think there's been some hit and misses across the board and around. Um, but again, it's, it's those early round first round with receivers that get highlighted the most. Did he miss on Nikhil? Yeah. Um, did we not draft DK Metcalf? No, but neither did 31 other teams for three right. ranks. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I mean? Um, you so, know, because I could so turn I, around. One thing that I love to say to Buffalo fans to screw with you is you could have had Patrick Mahomes. You know what I mean? But but you ended up with Tredavious White, one of the best corners in the league. So there's always a, a balance to it. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah. It's, well, I, I preface by saying that. Uh, I love that you say you. preface and not preface. <laughs> I'm okay with I love, it. Okay, I, I love it. it. I love that you do that. I wish I could get my question out so we can keep this moving. <laughs> All I want to know is what draft pick are you most excited about outside of Mac Jones, right? What's the what's the one draft pick you're looking at Christian that you're excited about? More. Dude, uh, yeah. I, didn't want, mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't want them to take a quarterback in the first round. I sat there for a week trying to convince Connor why Christian Barmore would be the best choice in the first round. He did. So when, we, when we walked away with a quarterback and Barmore, dude, I just I almost jumped out of my I, I literally did jump out of my seat for both picks. Like Barmore, though, is the one that put me through the roof. Like I'm just that kid's our Vince Wilfork, and we've needed a Wilfork since Wilfork left. And we've got a guy now yeah. who can get pressure up the middle, can stop the run. I love that kid, and I love any defensive player that comes out of out of Alabama. I'm a defense guy, number one. Like I love defense. High Tower is my favorite player. Another Alabama boy. I should become an Alabama fan. But uh, I, I know. love. No, don't. No, you don't. said you're an OSU guy. You can't make that. Yeah. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, I was kidding. Can. I was kidding. I was kidding. That's, That's why I love whew. running backs and defense. Okay, because I'm an OSU yep. guy and a Patriots fan. But uh, Christian Barmore is one I'm the most excited about. Yeah, I, I'd say Ramondre Stevenson, especially after what we've seen out of the preseason. I think it's probably one of the biggest reasons why they traded Sony Michelle today. Um, I mean, I I think he's going to be a stud. They're saying Legarrett uh, Legarrett Blunt two point oh. I think he's going to be just as good, if not better. So I'm excited to see him. The Patriots running game is going to be very strong. Yeah, I I've seen his production in the preseason so far, and we've kind of tried to. On, on this show be like okay it's just preseason so like let's try not to get too excited about it because yeah. they still have to do it against starters they have to do it against whatever and i don't know what, what like when he's been playing specifically but i know he's had a couple of highlight plays he's definitely about been a guy that i was like didn't expect that from right now right i definitely expected going into the season that your like james white was going to be one of the main two backs obviously and i think he still will be no matter what but yeah. then um the the dude from alabama completely blanking on his name I was uh, uh, Harris, Mac right? Jones, Damian Harris, Damian, Damian Harris. Damian Harris. Harris. Yep. I was fully expecting that he was going to be the starter and it was just going to be like an easy no brainer. But the way Stevenson has been playing, he's definitely making a push to be like, maybe he should get some of those carries and maybe he could end up being the guy by the end of the year. Cause like you really never know with the way Bill Belichick kind of runs his really the running back group. Like you have no idea what's going to happen week to week. There's a better, he, yeah, he's going to use a lot of people. But there's a better chance that Ramondre Stevenson is going to get redshirted this year than he's going to play. For some reason, Belichick doesn't like playing running backs as rookies. That's just my only fear now with the trade of Sony Michelle is uh, what I think just Patriot fans like to ignore is Damian Harris is just as fragile as Sony. Like yeah. they've they've missed the same amount of games since since Stevenson or since Harris has come in the league. His rookie season when he was when he was uh, redshirted when he never played, where he was a healthy scratch. He had three runs and ended up on the IR twice. You know what Jeez. I mean? Like, he, he went on, <laughs> came off, like, ran a play and ended up back up on, like, the pup again. So it's like, you know, he's – and then he was injured last year. And so it's – I think because Ramondre Stevens is a rookie and Belichick doesn't usually like to push the rookies, there may I, – I asked – I said this to, to – I don't know if I said to Connor or said on another show, but – I think that there could some maybe some sellers remorse down the line, especially if Harris gets hurt, and now you've got Ramondre Stevenson taking the whole load on his back without Sony Michelle as that buffer to to be a guy because Sony Michelle averaged almost five yards per carry last year. He was just hurt right. for a lot of the year, but when he ran, I think it was like four point seven yards per carry. His rookie year was like four point five yards per carry. It's only his second year when the Patriots' offensive line was absolutely atrocious, and both their fullbacks got injured. 
and they run a fullback system that at the end of the year, our inside linebacker became the fullback that Sony yeah. Michelle actually had an off year and he still ran for 900 yards. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So, and then there's also this guy, JJ Taylor, who I think is going to emerge. He's more of our, yeah. our, our change of pace back. He's like our Rex yeah. Burkhead from last year. That's going to be sort of his spot. But from a power back perspective, I worry about Harris because he is pretty fragile. So in terms of the running back room, then obviously a lot of their production depends on having a strong enough offensive line. You guys lost Tooney. What is the expectation of the offensive line knowing that? I mean, he was probably the best offensive lineman that you guys had just over the course of X X amount of years over the last however many you want to go. He was just always good. What is the expectation with the offensive line then? Just as high as last year, if not okay. higher, because Mike on we knew who was just absolutely phenomenal at tackle last year is actually a guard. He's an interior offensive lineman. Uh, I was a lineman uh, uh, in college, in high school, and I love watching like footwork and handwork. That's the thing that I watch the most. Connor gets upset when I go on 20 minute rants of or 20 minute <laughs> long explanations about where a guy's feet should be pointed in this and that. But Technically, he's fantastic. We've mm-hmm. got Trent Brown back, who hasn't had, didn't have success in, yeah. in Vegas and Oakland. However, was very successful with the Patriots. That's what made him the highest paid tackle. Mm-hmm. And we see that a lot. Look at Nate Solder. He was one of the best tackles in the league until he went to the Giants, and then he wasn't, right? right. So um, the Patriots know how to – now, Dante Scarnacci is not there, but his protege is now the coach. Uh, so moving him inside and taking that Tooney role, is he going to replace Tooney? No. It's like you don't replace Tom Brady. Right. You know, like right. you just yeah. you don't and you don't replace a Joe Tooney. He was the best interior offensive lineman in the league the last three years because he's the best interior offensive lineman in the league. It's why the Chiefs paid him way to spent way too much money on an interior guard. It's also, though, the Patriots are always in a luxury position that Belichick does know how to evaluate offensive line talent. We also got this kid, Yanni Kayust, who or Kayust or Kayust, something like that. Kayust, who, yeah. He's been hurt for two years. He's since a rookie, and there's been high hopes on him, and he's finally healthy and able to play again. No, so I, for us, so now you kick Mike Onwenu into the into the left guard position with Shaq Mason on the right. Isaiah Wynn, who's healthy again, kicks out to the left tackle. Trent Brown moves to the right. I think that should be switched, and it will set sometime this year because especially if Mac Jones is playing, you're going to want Trent Brown protecting the the blind side. But you have you got those two guys on the outside with with. Don't forget, we thought we were going to lose David Andrews too, so we went mm-hmm. and signed uh, Ted Karras, who's yep. technically, if you look at his skill set, he's a starting center caliber. That's our backup, and he can play guard as well. So we have a starting caliber player on the bench along with Kiyu. So it's a deep bench again uh, with the offensive line. We lost Tooney, but there's a lot that there's a lot of moving pieces there that are going to work this year. Yeah, I mean they they obviously lost Tooney, but then at the same time they brought back Trent Brown. So they lost one of the best one of the best uh, offensive linemen of the game. They brought one of the best ones back. David Andrews, I thought for sure was going to be gone. He came back. They uh, they re-signed Ted Karras. Mike Onwenu was great as a rookie last year. Isaiah Wins finally healthy again. I, I think the offensive line is going to be very good. I'm not too concerned about them. All right, interesting. So I, I actually have one more question before we get into your questions and then uh, expectations and whatnot. And I just completely thought about this i should have mentioned it before it's unscripted it's unscripted nice. <laughs> um, but it. I, it really shouldn't be a difficult question for you guys to answer but like you guys had a lot of guys who sat out last year due to like they were yeah. on the COVID exempt list so with a lot of i don't know exactly how many of them are actually back with the team or not um is it just it's just high tower just high tower every chung retired and everybody the most in, the most important oh, sorry, one too. by far uh, yeah bolden, bolden. by far by far by the far. most important sorry brandon okay, so is back too special yeah, team okay. good Special so team. Hightower was the way I wanted to go with this anyways, because he was by far the most important player on that list. I think he was the most important player on the defense. What are your expectations with him getting back into the swing of things after taking a year off? Is it something where you're like, man, it, like it, it might take a couple of weeks for him to really feel it back out? Or are you expecting him to just hit the ground running? For me, it's, it's, it's thank God he's back. I, I think he's going <laughs> to hit the ground running. That was one of the biggest issues with the Patriots last season is mm-hmm. every team, all you really had to do if you wanted to beat the Patriots was run the ball up the middle. They had absolutely no chance of stopping you. They got gashed by everybody, and the biggest piece missing was Dante Hightower. I, I can't wait to have him back. I mean, even if he is a little slow out of the gate, 
I, I mean, it, it's not going to be any worse than it was last year. And and I, I don't expect him to be. I think he's been in the league and he's been on the team for such a long time that he'll be able to pick right up where he left off. Why would you even put that in the atmosphere that he's going to start off slow? <laughs> I said he well, won't. I'm It'll hoping. be fine. I'm I'm right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. I Listen, did it because I want him to a little bit. <laughs> there's there's one guy that people know if you don't want to piss me off, because I can get moody and pissy and just stop talking on our show and just let Connor talk the whole time, and I'll just sit there and go, yep, yep, yep. And it's it's trash Dante Hightower. Um, I've already told my wife I'd leave her for him. Right trash! <laughs> it's just, uh, no, I love Hightower. He sucks. Um, <laughs> Hightower is Sorry, like I'm, having... done. I'm done now. <laughs> High t- go back to your corner. Okay? <laughs> High tower is like having another DC on the field. It really is. Uh, away from his 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 skill, he's a little slow, anyways. Just in general, he's always been like that. But it's it's you know it's are almost we like... all yeah we are. yeah. I'm an offensive lineman. We only know slow. <laughs> so it's... But it's it's he sees the D in offense like nobody else does. It's why he's the Mike. He's been the Mike linebacker since 2011, since he broke into the league. Uh, anytime he's out, there's a noticeable difference in the front seven. In 2017, it was an absolute collapse of a defense when he went out. They come back in 2018. They have one of the best defenses in the league. They go win the Super Bowl. 2019, one of the best defenses in the league. Get knocked on the wild card round because Tom Brady can't throw a touchdown. And then um, – and yeah, it's uh, Tom and Brady's then- fault. <laughs> it is he ruined Josh Boyce's career. No, but uh, sorry, inside joke. Our not not out. the wide receiver. Not 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 our Jake Kumaro. <laughs> <laughs> our biggest fight ever. That him and I, we almost broke up. Our pride podcast was over Josh Boyce and Tom Brady. So we just in one of our practice squad. <laughs> yeah, who, who picked who picked which side? It wasn't even like that. All I said was... We had Josh Boyce being a pro bowler for like 10 years if it wasn't for Tom Brady. No, if he, if he, if he, if he and, played with the Bills, no. yeah, a thousand-yard season. No, no. See, this is it. Con- Listen, Connor still puts Tom Brady on the fucking pedestal. You know Who what wouldn't? I mean? No, he still Yeah, puts- I mean, yeah. No, no, he's a, he's the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I hate that I have to keep reminding. Listen, look who you guys are starting me. You're just bringing it up all over again. <laughs> talk about talk about your guys is Jay Kumaro. That's all I want you to do, or Duke Williams. Yes. Your guys is Duke Williams. So, anyways, Josh Boyce came out like a year ago and basically said that he would have had a better career, but Tom Brady boxed him out. And my point was. <laughs> Brady does that. Brady Brady does that. Brady boxes receivers out if he doesn't like them, he won't throw the foot. He did it to Randy Moss after in his final season there. They they won a game 41 to 7 and he didn't Moss didn't get one target at him. Like when when Brady gets upset with you, he'll box you out and let you in. So Josh Boyce basically came out and said Brady ruined my career. Connor took that as I was coming out and trashing Tom Brady and anyways it turned into a big fight and then I started trashing Brady and it just Anyway. Clearly, clearly, there's like not strong feelings there anymore. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, there's still a big contentious issue between us on this. It's just uh, where the fuck were we? Anyways, High Tower. <laughs> yeah, High Tower. <laughs> High Tower. There's a noticeable difference when he's not on the field. He's kind of like the Tom Brady of our backfield. You know, he's not going to be the greatest of all time by any means. But uh, you, what I meant by Brady is I always said, like, having Brady on the field is like having another offensive coordinator, right? Like, uh-huh. you didn't need Josh McDaniels telling Brady to look at the offense and call an audible. He knew just by looking and, and could do it. That's like Hightower. Hightower doesn't need the defensive coordinator in his ear. He can just look in two seconds, and you'll see him calling audibles all the time. And when he's not, there's a noticeable difference. So even if he does come out slow, his brain is going to be just as sharp, and that's what's going to be more important than anything, especially when you we've brought Kyle Van Noy back, we've added Matt Judon, uh, Ronnie Perkins, who nobody talks about, who was an absolute steal coming out of Oklahoma, you know, Christian his Barmore. His name is field. Ronnie. <laughs> uh, Dietrich Weiss Jr., who, who finally learned how to play football last year. So it's, uh, you know, with Hightower there to sort of spread it around, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be really good. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot less questions on the defensive side of the ball than the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, like for obvious reasons, mainly focusing on the quarterback. But um, I think we, you guys have a couple questions for us, right? Yes, sir. All right, let them rip. You want so me to go? Wanna... For, you want to go first? Go ahead. <laughs> So I was going to tell you guys, I think that obviously Buffalo is one of the most complete teams in the league. The defense is very good. Obviously, you're pretty short up as far as, you know, wide receiver and quarterback, obviously. One of the biggest things is the running back position. 
Mm-hmm. What's going What's going on there? Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. I mean, who's going to be the guy? Do you guys have any concerns with the running back position? I mean, what, what do you think there? So I, I think a lot of the struggle with the running back position last year had to do – I mean, they didn't play great themselves, but they definitely played better than they showed statistically because they were getting hit pretty consistently like a yard, two yards into the backfield. So they were having to make a play just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Right. The offensive line was just horrible in any sort of run blocking. I'm more nervous about the offensive line being able to improve in the running game than are the running backs going to be able to do their job because like they they both were I don't know the number off the top of my head but they were both in like the top 15 in the NFL of broken tackles per run, I think it was, or yards after contact. Both of them were way up there. So they were both still making stuff happen. It was just almost always behind the line of scrimmage as opposed to getting to the line of scrimmage and then having to make a guy miss. So I expect that it's going to start out with uh, Singletary being the guy at the beginning. They'll probably split carries. But if it goes the way it did last year, they were definitely starting to lean more on Zach Moss towards the end of the year to be that more of a bell cow back before he – had his injury. I don't expect either of them to ever be like that 20 carry a game type of guy. If they're in the Bills offense, it's probably 10 to 12 carries max per player. Right. So I fully expect that it's probably going to be a 50 50 share. Matt Breda could come in and take one of their spots and take over that, depending on how that kind of speed element goes. But I, it's never, they're, the team is not going to be a team that focuses on running the ball with their running backs more often than passing. So as long as they have that passing game going with Josh Allen, with Diggs, with Beasley, yep. I'm comfortable with as long as the running game shows up in moments, cool. They don't have to be perfect all the time, but show up in those big moments, and I'm happy with it. So my my worry is more on the offensive line than the actual running backs. Okay, yep, gotcha. Do you, do Naps 100% you, correct. You? Okay. Uh, no, you're you're 100% correct. I don't see it as who's the starting running back. It's more like 1A, 1B, and you can flip-flop that um, regardless of whoever you want, right? But he um, he's right. He's going to be Singletary in the beginning, and then he's going to flip back to Zach Moss. Until Zach Moss gets healthy and proves that he can stay healthy, it's always going to be the Singletary show, right? right. And Zach Moss is going to come in. Now, again, in the later half of the season, they wanted Zach Moss to be that bruiser, right, to wear down the games. And he did it for, what, one game? He he closed out one game for us, and then outside of that, it, it wasn't it wasn't mm-hmm. like that again. So he, I mean, he got he, hurt after that, yeah, yeah. He he got hurt. So until he can stay consistent, then it's always going to be one A one B. All right. So like I said, I'm a defense guy, and I could sit mm-hmm. here and rattle off every great name that the Patriots have on their defense right now, and I'm going to include Stephon Gilmore next. I got a kind of like a either or question for you guys, right? So I'm okay. going to put I could rattle it off. However, on the other side of the ball, too, though, or on the other side of the thing, I'm actually from Toronto, so I guess just down the road from me in Buffalo, uh, I look at guys like Tremaine Edmonds, Tredavious White, uh, Poyer, Nick McLeod. Hyde. <laughs> he has uh, no idea who that is. And he Milano, right? Like Remember Milano. the name. <laughs> you guys can – I can rattle off some some big names yeah, for you yeah. guys, too. So when you look at this, I think that uh, I read something the other day. They did a PFF, did a comparison to secondaries, and they had Buffalo number four and the Patriots number five and basically said it's the uncertainty of Stephon Gilmore. Otherwise, they could they could flip back and forth. When you look at your defense, look at the Patriots defense, who do you think is going to be at the end of the year? The, like, who do you think is the better defense all around from the front seven to the secondary? Who? That's a good one. That is so good. Uh, people are going to hate me. Uh I I do not trust our defense. I, I said it. I don't I don't trust them. If they come out and they play like 2019 defense, what, and that's what we've been wanting them to do. We've been wanting them to come out and do that, right? But you guys, are you now, about to just steal my answer from what I gave <laughs> a week or two ago? <laughs> you, you always steal my answers. Um, but you asked. Sorry, now, sorry. Did you like, not hear Connor when we were talking about the offensive line just repeat <laughs> everything I just yeah. said? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what on. we do, right? Um, <laughs> my. What I was going to say is, like, you asked Nap in the beginning of the show, like, how do you feel? How do you feel about this? Blah, blah, blah. I'm the exact opposite, right? Like, I am I have tempered by expectations, like, no tomorrow, right? Um, I don't see our defense taking that jump, and I'm going to get crucified, right? But I just don't see them getting back to who they are, right? Even with Star coming back, it's like, okay, well, well that's 
one guy and I understand that he's good, but we also need to have depth behind that to stop the run. So I'm going to go with the Pats, right? I'm going to lean on, you know, Bill Belichick always having a really strong defense. I'm going to go with the Pats having a better defense than the Bills. And once again, I can get crucified in the YouTube comments and I'm, I'm perfectly okay with that. And I'm going to go to sleep very, very, very happy tonight. <laughs> I, I think the, well, I'll say this to start out in order to have a successful season, the Patriots have to have a better defense than the Bills because the Bills can yeah. be carried by the offense. Yeah, Correct. I, I think I wouldn't be surprised if the Patriots do end up having the better defense than the Bills. I like to think that because the Bills are – well, I, I wanted to say healthy, but right now we're, we're – like the injury we're not, bug is no. – the injury bug got our secondary a little bit. Our CB2 spot is completely up in the no, air. It's with, with No, it's not. Yeah, sure, it's not. <laughs> No, it's um, not. Yeah, no, Levi McLeod's Wallace, it. Levi Wallace, Dane Jackson, the guys who are competing for CB2, they're both bit by the injury bug, not really practicing right now. So I would like to say that it's going to be the Bills who have the better defense, but just I, I really, I really think that they're probably going to struggle with tight ends again. They'll be better than they were last year, but still not great against tight ends. And there's a lot like, you have to play against Johnny Smith. You have to play against Kaseki. And yep. in order to be successful, the Bills are going to have to play against Travis Kelsey and like Tyler Croft. Right. Tyler Croft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, we can we can laugh all you want, but the reason why he was signed was to do what he's doing in the preseason. Once again, it's the preseason, but he's doing yep. it in the preseason the reason- with Zach Wilson in in the Jets, right? I mean, so the reason he, he was signed out, is because he was cheap. Well, he was also there to be that guy, right? Yeah, but Either way, I think it's it's easier to look at as a Bills fan. I want to be, I want to just say the Bills. But if I'm yeah. looking at it objectively, if everybody is healthy, I have less questions as a whole about the Patriots because we've seen the Patriots defense not have the best talent, but still perform at a high level at times. Like last year, without all of those players, without the main like the biggest name on that defense in the center of the defense. He's not even there. And the Bills fans are going to be like, oh, well, we, we wrecked the Patriots in that one game. But the Patriots had a relatively good defense the rest of the year. So getting him back. In that game you guys wrecked us, we were missing our – <laughs> our, we're missing our best corner. <laughs> you yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, still missing, definitely missing guys. So, but, yeah. like, I want to make that. Well, you killed us with, like, Steph, with Steph and Diggs, too. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. listen, shout out to the Buffalo Buffalo guys because I hear you're trying to be all objective and shit, right? I'm but, like, trying. Sh- I'm shout trying. out to the Buffalo guys. Connor and I say it all the time. People are like, oh, we got burnt by Steph and Diggs. Like, everybody, everybody got did. Burnt yeah. by Steph Everyone and Diggs. did. Like, like, what the Didn't fuck? Didn't matter who it was. Last don't year. use that as the comparison. Right. <laughs> like, that's the worst comparison in the world. Like, the guy yeah, I mean, the what, he did, what he year. did last year was just crazy. But I, absurd, I, think, yeah. I think overall it's it's hard for me to not say if the Patriots stay healthy, I wouldn't be shocked to see them have the better defense. And if, it depends on what metrics you want to go by. We go yeah. by scoring defense yards, whatever. But generally speaking, the Patriots are going to have a good defense under Bill Belichick. Right. How do you guys look at it? See, because I get into this debate all the time. And, and and look, stats are a thing. You guys probably know it. You use stats to, to strengthen your I, argument, right? Like it's, I go it's, off of uh, – well, I, I go off of which defense makes me, you know, hornier. So. <laughs> yeah. but like, it's typically you know, the flashier one. Yeah. Touche. Like, it's 2021. Right. You are proud yep. of that one, aren't you? <laughs> it's proud it's of that 2021. One. <laughs> I can do what I want and say what I want. You know, we we watched the game last year where where the Patriots let up didn't let up a single touchdown, but they let up a field oh. goal on every play, yeah. and that was just as frustrating to me. Like it's like yeah. you let the you let them score on seven straight plays. You know what I mean? I don't give a shit that you didn't give up a touchdown. You let them score on seven straight possessions and lost the game because they'll start to add up. To me, I don't care if they give up 500 yards in passing. If they let up 14 points and the Patriots went 21 14, the defense had a great game. It all comes down to scoring in my mind. You know what I mean? If you want to let Josh Allen run down the field and you sack him right in time to knock him out of field goal range and don't give up a point and force a punt, go for it. Let him throw 500 yards if he wants. Just keep him out of the end zone, right? I don't care how many yards you give up in a game. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want it. Obviously, like nobody wants it to be more yards, but I'll give up all those yards if it means not letting in the touchdown 
if the defense holds to stop a touchdown, stop the field goal, whatever, I will take that over like less yards because let's say let's say it is like the team gets three really good drives, but they don't really do much the rest of the time. But those drives all end in touchdowns and you lose 21-17. Not great. It, it <laughs> really all ends up lose. being – the yeah. Patriots will lose 21 17. That's the thing. Like, I think right. this Patriots defense 17 is the mark. Like, you can't let more than 17 if you want that to was give our- what it, it was two years. It was 2019, I think, was the, the Patriots were the number one scoring defense. The Bills were number two, right? And it was right around like 15 or 17 points a game that both teams were letting up. Yeah, I mean, that's. that's- that's when Tom that's Brady ideal. was the most miserable 8 no quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. As you can tell, I harbor a lot of bitterness towards Tom Brady. So Why it's funny. Ever? It's funny because <laughs> I actually am starting to enjoy him more the longer he's away of from course you away. Right. Because his right. following him on social media, I hate every single time I see something that he posts. And I'm sure it's not really him. It's his team. I don't even care. If I had seen him do that two years ago. I'd be like, oh, this guy sucks. I hate him. Like, what? <laughs> this isn't even a funny post. This is like, it's just stupid. Just get off social media. But now I'm like, oh, like that, that video is kind of cool. It's funny. Like, <laughs> like this guy's just having fun out there in Tampa. Do so you know, I love the, it now. No, and I get that. The only reason anybody in New England knows who Ryan Fitzpatrick is, is because he beat us one time. Cause that's that one loss. That's that one blemish in that 15 year stretch against Buffalo when Fitzpatrick beat us. So he became enemy number one. And I'm like, <laughs> because it's a, cause he made it like a 14 and one record instead of a 15 and zero. So I get mm-hmm. it. I get it. You know? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, no, fuck Tom Brady. I, said it. <laughs> I think people are going to like hearing you say <laughs> that. Connor's Especially face. on the bill station. <laughs> I was waiting face. for you two to say it. <laughs> all right so let's let's do expectations for the year and that's how we'll wrap it up i will say i think the bills are probably gonna get both games um most likely i think obviously the game in foxborough is going to be harder but i think the bills have the better team so i expect the bills to go two and zero. but i wouldn't be shocked if they are hard fought games because we saw last year obviously the, the patriots have the ability to do that to the bills even without brady um, I think the Patriots are going to fight for a wild card spot, but it'll be on, on the edge. And I don't, I really don't know because it's going to completely come down to quarterback play. Where are you yeah. guys at, though? No, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the same spot, man. Pretty much. I mean, I'll, I'll say that I think the Patriots will go one and one versus the Bills. I think they're going to fight for a wild card spot. I have faith they're going to be good enough this year that they can sneak in on a wild card. Um, but I do think that the Bills are going to win the division. I, uh, I would, I will admit that. Yeah, we take a lot of shit for saying uh, Bills are going to win the division as their division. But I think we're going to split. I think we're going to beat you guys at home, only because Gillette Stadium is going to be full again, and Josh Allen might see shit he's never saw before with the amount of talent that Belichick's going to throw at him and the Still amount. Does? <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> right? That's that's in Buffalo. That's that in Buffalo. In Buffalo. Yeah, that's in that Buffalo. Just, <laughs> but. Uh, no, it can't I just, happen anymore. <laughs> is it illegal now to throw dildos yeah, on the field? Yeah, I mean, they're no fun over here. You can only do stuff once. It used to be. It used to be fun. You know, I told somebody once, I live in Toronto, so I live, like, it's like a two-hour drive from Buffalo mm-hmm. to Toronto, and they go, is it the same? I said, it's not even close. I said, Buffalo <laughs> and Toronto, it's like, it's it's it literally is two different countries. I said, so it, it, it's like that. But, um, no, I... Uh, I see a splitting because I think that defensively New England's going to be doing is going to be able to do enough to disrupt Josh Allen, and I don't think your run game is strong enough to to make up for it. Um, and you're not going to beat up on us like you did the first game in the run game when you when when McDermott kind of protected Allen a little bit. Um, so I think we're going to split. I think you guys. I th- honestly think I think it's going to be tight New England, and I think you guys are going to smash us in Buffalo. That's my my prediction. Does it? And this is this will be the last question that I have. Um, but as you were talking about the the defense and throwing more at Josh Allen, does it worry you at all that you guys play more of that man to man defense? Because that's what Josh Allen kind of excels at. It it doesn't worry. It, it's yes and no. I'm worried about digs. That you know that's my my worry. Um, where the Patriots excel at man to man, and forget last year where the coverage was just really good. Go back to 2019 when Allen couldn't move the football, and I know you didn't mm-hmm. have Diggs, but couldn't. But you had Brown, you had uh, Beasley, but you need with man to man, you still need time to throw the ball. With zone, yeah. you can get the ball at a little quicker. With man to man, 
you got to throw the ball. And if you just got someone barreling in on you all the time, like Josh Allen's going to have to make those, those spectacular throws and eventually it's going to, it's going to get to him, Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think, and I think that, with the talent the Patriots have, this is where the, this Patriots talent is so diversified on that front seven. Like I go across the whole front seven. And one thing they've been missing for years is pressure up the middle. Now you can have Christian Barmore barreling down on you in the middle and Matthew Judon coming on the other side. That's going to be a different look for, for a Josh Allen. who's you know, And you saw it a little bit against the Colts. If you go back to the Colts game, right? It's going to be the front seven of of new England is going to look very similar to the front seven of the Colts. And you saw him struggle because they get pressure up the middle and off the edge. Most teams get it off of one side. The Patriots now have that bit of Colts front seven where they have the talent to get pressure everywhere up and down the line. And, and unless he really learned from that game, it, it, every quarterback, Tom Brady struggles against those mm-hmm. kind of the defenses. You know what I mean? So I think that's why we can get a split. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, I said it. It wouldn't shock me if it is a split. I expect the Bills to win, but if they if they lose one in Gillette, it would not be the biggest shock to to me at that point. Just because that that defense when they're rolling, I don't like going into. I don't like seeing the Bills go into New England with that defense playing well. So oh, how time right. has changed. That's what it's going to come down to. When the yeah. hell did a Buffalo fan ever say I expect Buffalo to win against the Patriots? Oh my goodness! Like, what I a know. time we live. This is an awful time oh. for humanity. Oh. It fan. really is. Well, look, well, we appreciate, ago, we you, appreciate you guys coming. <laughs> 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 well, we love Peter. We want to have you guys on our show. We like you guys. I like yeah, you for guys. sure. I'm, I'm sure Connor does too. Absolutely. I think you're okay. I think you're, I appreciate you're, that. You're okay. you, can, you, can always, you can come on our show. You can always <laughs> you can always grow. You can get better. We can always get better. Yeah. Do you want to you want to give okay. a grade oh, real quick, Casey? Do you want to give them a grade on their performance? My growth is stunted, buddy. Oh yeah, me too. Uh, Since it's the eighth grade, I it's hard. It it's, it's it's hard, right? I I appreciate the honesty. Um, <laughs> You know, it's it's hard just to give you a letter grade, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to say a B. Wow. That's um, good. I'm also going to say that my my one-month-old daughter just um, walked into the room with my wife holding her. So I think that's that's my cue. <laughs> that's your cue. That's that <laughs> well, that's okay because we were, we were just wrapping up anyway, so that, that's okay. Mm-hmm. I, don't want, I don't want your wife to be <laughs> upset with she's us going too long again because we've definitely gone a little bit long. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> she's like don't say that about me <laughs> all right let's let's wrap this up connor ray we definitely appreciate you guys appreciate for you guys sure. for coming on oh, appreciate man. you for thanks for uh, answering us. our questions oh are we gonna get to oh, hello. Oh, oh, hello. Hello. hello hello Wow, wow. Oh, no, Doesn't okay. even bring don't brings his daughter what? on the show and then what? hides her baby me to- <laughs> I can't see her <laughs> look She's You're like, your Bills what are you fan. Doing? You know what, dude? <laughs> Enjoy that you because doing? you blink and then all of a sudden. Yeah, like, there's that smile. Fuck. <laughs> okay, I'll put you back. All right, back. yeah, Casey, right. we will we'll we'll let you go be a dad. Guys, we really appreciate it. You guys want to plug your show um and, and your socials and everything, just in yeah. case anybody wants to get some more information no on the Pats. We're on uh, we're on YouTube, Dear Pats Nation, not D E E R, as uh, I said before. Yep. Dear Pats Nation as in D E A R. Um we're also on an app called Newsbreak. You can find us there. Uh, the Deer Pats Nation, we do a podcast 8.30 live, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, Sunday through Thursday, live unless the Patriots are playing. We do a post game. We just talk a lot of shit, and uh, we're not we're not very good at what we do. Newsbreak is something. <laughs> yes. Uh, Newsbreak is where I'm a little bit more serious and I actually break down Patriots news. You can find us there. Just go to newsbreak.com slash Deer Pats Nation. And, uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter at DPN underscore Ray. Follow uh, our Twitter account at Deer Pats Nation. And the man down there is at Connor Commentary. Yes, sir. Right. Awesome. Awesome. I've gotten everybody else to do this so far. Can we close it out with a Go Bills? Oh, <laughs> not a fucking chance. <laughs> I don't right, care. I we don't want to hear one. anything from you guys right now. Did you, did, did you get another AFC East thing? I've gotten, I've gotten, the, I've gotten our Dolphins guest and our Jets guest to say it. Right, I will wish the Bills why. the best of luck this yeah, season. Yeah, we wish you the best of I, luck. Good, best, best in health. That, that is perfect. All right. No injuries. Go Bills. <laughs>